Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's presentation titled Understanding Goal-Free Evaluation, a Paradigm Shift in Program Evaluation. Now, we know that program evaluation is an essential part of educational research. As educators, it helps us understand the effectiveness of educational programs and allows us to make informed decisions towards improvement. But what happens if traditional methods don't align too much with our objectives or focus too much on the goals and results, well, that's where goal-free evaluation comes in. Let's look at our agenda for this video or for this presentation. We're going to look at the intro and the history. We're going to look at the rationale behind using goal-free evaluation. We're going to look at a conceptual framework or an idea of a conceptual framework, the methodology. We'll look at the benefits and, of course, the challenges We'll study, not study, I'm sorry, we'll present a couple of in-practice or use cases of goal-free evaluation, and we're going to wrap it up with a conclusion. Once again, I welcome you. My name is Omar Lopez, and let's go ahead and begin. So the introduction. For an introduction, we know that goal-free evaluation refers to a program, a method that uh, allows the evaluator, actually where the evaluator intentionally avoids learning the official or stated goals and objectives. Basically, he's looking at what is happening, making observations, looking at the actual outcomes without judgment, whether they're aligned to the goals or not. He or she doesn't know what the goals are, so he, evaluates a, he or she evaluates a program uh, based on its results. It is, as uh, Guerra Lopez uh, uh, states in the book, an unbiased perspective of ongoing events within this program. A little bit on the history. This was uh, this was a method proposed back in 1974, mid-70s. Michael Scriven came out with goal-free evaluation. It was, an, at that point, an innovative approach to evaluate programs. Now, uh, as we look at it, it, it was a method that diverged or separated somewhat from traditional goal-oriented methods. Um, instead, this new method focused on identifying all actual outcomes, whether they're intended or not. Here is the framework that I mentioned. Yes, it might look like it's a lot, and indeed it is, but if we follow the arrows, we'll be able to find a path of clarity. We know that there's a program with goals. These goals are undefined or unknown to the evaluator, so the evaluator conducts, conducts a needs assessment, and it yields these results. With that, the, evaluates, the evaluator also looks at observations, looks at some data, and then conducts that evaluation where uh, this evaluation is going to yield results or, or actually a discovery, right? The evaluator is going to come to a discovery. Now, he or she is going to tie this with the goals after understanding what the goals are, analyzes, and now he or she is going to analyze the results. And this is where there's going to uh, some attribute uh, some effects to what happened and, of course, assess the impact, the overall impact of this program. Now the evaluator prepares a report, and if there's a need to modify the program, make changes to the program, then those take place after that. But what is the role of the evaluator? So the evaluator plays a huge role, right? And in this method, he or she operates independently with independently without the knowledge of the program's stated goals and objectives. And this is to avoid any type of bias that might arise from knowing what the program aims to achieve. So the role of the evaluator is to observe and measure, measure actual outcomes, which are very important, conduct an independent analysis, and act as a judge of the program's true merit. So what is the program resulting in, right? So why would we select a goal-free evaluation? Well, this is to uncover the true impact of a program. What is the program doing beyond the fulfillment of its stated aim? So we know the program has a goal, but what is it doing beyond that? So this method prioritizes the real results achieved by a program over the intended results. The driving question be behind this type of study or beside be behind this type of evaluation is what are all the impacts of the program, including any intended and unintended consequences. But what does the research say? What are others saying about this? So just because somebody's not informed, the goal-free evaluation aims to control that bias by not informing the evaluator of the goals or the objectives of this program, allowing for recognition of unintended positive or 
and or negative side effects. Now, it also offers a potential benefits for foundation-sponsored evaluations by adapting to changes in program goals and environment. Lastly, goal-free evaluation operates on four principles, and I mentioned some of these earlier, including identifying relevant effects without referencing goals, so conducting a needs assessment, for example, determine what occurred. Okay, so what happened after this program was put into effect? Attributing the effects to the program, so finding, getting those results and saying this is a result of this because of this and assessing the positivity negativity or neutrality of this uh, of these effects within the program so maybe it has no impact maybe it does have an impact but in a negative way and that's the whole point of goal-free evaluation what are some of the benefits well we know for sure and we mentioned this already several times unbiased assessment of program outcomes identification of unintended effects which can sometimes lead to opportunities and of course adaptability to change uh, in the program and the environment. So that is key. This adaptability is very, very important. So goal-free evaluation poses challenges such as unclear purpose, measurement difficulty without predefined goals, increased subjectivity in, uh, in interpretation. And of course, there might be some stakeholder pushback because there is no really a goal in mind. Uh, this causes some concerns in the accountability, but nonetheless, it is a method that can yield positive results from the overall evaluation. So when we look at goal-free evaluation in practice, what are some of the use cases? Well, it can be used for corporate training, right? A lot of times the corporations have a way of training, of onboarding new members to the team, but it might have a different effect. So maybe it is training, but then it brings out other opportunities, as I mentioned earlier, in the people that join the team. Now for us as educators, curriculum development is super critical as it assesses the effectiveness on, on, on student learning and engagement. So if we are working with a curriculum and students are meeting the student expectations and looking back at what they're doing, we evaluate this without you know, yes, we know the goal, but what is the overall uh, impact of the curriculum? And in the same time, we look at information systems and we evaluate actual use and benefits beyond the predefined specification. So there might be an application or a new web tool or some sort of software where it's intended to do one thing, but it does something else. And that, again, it brings an opportunity to continue and build on that momentum. And of course, knowledge management. So there might be unintended positive outcomes like improved communication or innovation because of new discoveries. And this leads me to when we compare traditional goal-oriented versus goal-free evaluations. Again, the traditional focuses on, or is, uh, it's evaluation based on goals and objectives, while goal-free is not, it's just looking without having any knowledge of what the goals are, it's conducting an evaluation. And this is, this is something that, that I wanna highlight the next point here, is the evaluator's role in goal, oriented the evaluator is a technician trying to connect dots between what we are doing and what the program is intended to do and the goals on the other hand the evaluator acts like an archaeologist which is just trying to find something if, the, if there is anything that needs to be found that's what the role is when we look at methodology and reporting this is done in a goal oriented with a goal in mind and goal free is just free of having that knowledge of what the goal is and presenting the results. This is what I found. This is what it is. And let's make sense of that. As we wrap this up, there are five key reasons for adapting a goal-free approach. And again, we come back to that term unbiased evaluation. So there is some subject, uh, evaluators can be objective and look at all the outcomes. It is very comprehensive. So it's looking at the overall and a holistic, with a holistic lens to see what the impact is. It prevents the tunnel vision by focusing again on the larger picture. And as I mentioned earlier, a critical point, it is adaptable. So if something happens in the evaluation process, there is a way to, to adapt to changes, to push back to resistance, and it's still gonna work out at the end. And of course, it discovers unintended effects, which a lot of times it is a positive. So 
These are the references for what you just saw. You can pause the video now and check it out if you like to. But once again, my name is Omar, and I thank you greatly for sticking with me to the end, and we'll see you later.